I just got back from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And let me tell you, it wasn't too amazing. It wasn't too spectacular. It was it was probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And I'm going to tell you why. Well, I always stop and get coffee first. Because the coffee at the movie theater is very expensive. And we stopped at Starbucks. And there was this old lady there. And her name was Evelyn. That's what she told me. But she said that people call her Eve. And this is the sweetest lady. Okay, I love talking to old people and strangers. And I didn't start talking to her. She started talking to me. That's what they do. They love starting conversations with me. And so I'm in Starbucks down the counter. And this old lady, Eve, she asked me about, you know, if I had a girlfriend. And I told her yes. And then she asked if, you know, if I had plans for marriage. And she made some nice comments. I love when old people try to guess my age, but they do it in a complimentary fashion. You know, she said I, could, I wasn't any older than 23, and that was really sweet, because I'm, I'm, I'm 30. She asked about my girlfriend, if we're going to get married, and I said I'm planning on it, but, you know, times are tough right now. So Eve told me this sweet little story about her and her first boyfriend, who she wanted to marry. His name was Reginald, and this was back in the 50s. That's how old she is. What happened was, Reginald had a problem with Eve's sister. Because of it, they could never reconcile their differences. And eventually, Reginald walked out of Eve's life. Eve decided not to look for anyone else. You know, it's just her and her sister. And she's been keeping to herself for 60 years now going on, I guess. A sweet, sad tale, and I learned a lot from it. Basically, what Eve said, that when she was younger... When her and her sister were little girls, they were like 10, they were abused by their father. They had a horrible, horrible Mississippi country father. And he would come home every night from work. Basically, he would just take out all of his anger and bitterness on his daughters. He beat the living shit out of both of them. It's a really sad story she's telling me. This happened most of her childhood. So her father was a horrible, drunken, abusive, terrible human being. And her and her sister made a vow that they would take the beatings together. Because it would wear them out faster. It would wear the dad out faster if he was beating on both of them. They didn't have any brothers, no other sisters. The mom, she was a drunk too and she would just cry and keep to herself. So they made a vow when they were ten that they would stick together to get out of this horrible household and make them make something of themselves you know this is a good this is she's telling me this i'm having coffee before i go see this shitty movie about a guy who dresses as a spider so she's telling me the story and it's a beautiful story but then it turns tragic they they made this vow and what happened was one night but they had they had these two twin beds in their bedroom with like a dresser between the two and every night they would lay down and they would look into each other's eyes from across the beds. And they would go to sleep knowing that they were together. And that they'd always be together. And that they'd wake up together and nothing was going to stop them or hurt them. And they went to sleep thinking this is just another night. They, they, just, they just took their beatings. They're going to sleep on the beds. And when Evelyn woke up, her sister was gone. And at this point in the story... She was, I mean, at the coffee shop, Miss Eve is devastated telling me this. And I was choked up too. It was very sad. She didn't go into great detail about what happened to the sister. All I know for certain is that the father basically murdered her. The dad took her off. I don't want to know what he did. She wouldn't tell me. And I'm glad she didn't. Because the rest is going to give me nightmares. Wait till you hear the rest of this. One night she was just she was just gone. Her her father had taken her off and done God knows what to her, and uh, they never found the body. The father got a couple years in prison for some kind of weird charge. It doesn't matter. The state took Evelyn took Eve away. She doesn't she doesn't communicate with her mother anymore. Her dad died in a county jail in the sixties, but. What happened as a result of all this tragedy and this unbreakable bond she had with her sister, Tracy was her name, to try to fill to try to try fill that void in her life, she tried to find a husband, a man, um, after she got out of college. And 
She was about 21, 22 when she met Reginald. And this is where the problems came in. Because what Reginald didn't know. He knew that Eve's sister was tragically murdered. He knew all that. He knew the story. He'd heard it a bunch of times. But what he didn't know was that Eve still talked to Tracy. Okay? Now this is absolutely true. According to Eve. Okay? And I believe her. She's a sweet old lady. According to Eve, soon after her her sister um, died, she started appearing at her bedside. Now, it didn't matter where she was sleeping. Every night when Evelyn got tucked into bed to go to sleep, her sister would be waiting for her on the end of the bed. Now, what Eve told me was that a lot of people think, like, when they think of ghosts and apparitions, they think of see-through, like, Hollywood-type ghosts, but that's not true. She said it was as if she was there. Like, real, not see-through. Not transparent. Her sister was there, but... Instead of her just being there, which is already horrible enough, right, she was bloated. She said her sister looked as if she was a hundred pounds heavier and bloated, right? For no reason, her sister was mute. She doesn't, she sees her every night, almost every night, She, her sister is waiting for her at the edge of the bed. And then she got into more detail, which is the creepy part, was that her sister was not just, not only just bloated... But very white. And not white in a pale way. Like, she's dead, she hasn't had any sun. Not like that, like Eve explained in great detail. Because she's, she's seen her. She's gone to sleep with her for the last 50 years, basically. And she said, not white like pale, white like painted. Like her skin and her face is painted white. Like a painted. You can see the layers of paint. And she said, um, it's like a glistening paint. And her, she, she could never tell if it, if it was like a sheer or if she was sweating. It's like a wet, white, drippy paint on her bloated sister. That's what she has to go to sleep to every night. That's what she has waiting for her when she comes home from work or doing stuff with her family and her friends. And when Eve explained that to Reginald, he just couldn't handle it. He tried to deal with it, he tried to deal with it for a couple nights, but he never made it clear why he walked out, but he did walk out on her, just like everyone else did, and she, I asked her, I said, do you still see your sister every night before you go to sleep? And she said, yes, every night, without fail, and it's not like she appears, she's not like a ghost, she says... When she goes to sleep, she walks into her bedroom and her sister's already sitting there, waiting. 100 pounds heavier, painted white, dripping wet, and she can't talk. For some reason, she doesn't even try to communicate, she just stares at her. Eve says she thinks spirits can't talk or something like that. She's just there to comfort her. And I thought that was a beautiful story. I got done with my coffee, and I said goodbye to Miss Eve and gave her a hug. And I said, I hope I see you again, which is true, because she was a good person, and she's a very sweet old lady, and uh, me and my brother made our way to the Amazing Spider-Man 2, and it just fucking sucked. <laughs>